with the webcasting of the meeting. This meeting will be recorded for placement on council's website for the purpose of broadening knowledge of participation in council issues and demonstrating council's commitment to openness and accountability. All speakers must ensure that comments are relevant to the issue at hand and refrain from making personal comments or criticism or mentioning any private information. No other persons are permitted to record the meeting unless specifically authorised by council to do so. The opening prayer. We give thanks for the contribution by pioneers, early settlers, and for those who have fought in the various wars for the fabric of the Tenfield community we have today. By the words of our mouths and meditation of our hearts, be accepted in thy sight, O Lord. Amen. Acknowledgement of country. I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land who are meeting on today. I'd also like to pay respect for the elders past, present, and emerging of the Jatabal, Kamilaroi, and Mundjalung nations and extend that respect to other Aboriginal people present. Council, before I call for apologies, we do have one, just to inform everyone, we do have Council Berry on Zoom. Council Berry, you're online? Yes. Welcome, Gary. And, and from the engineering department, the head of the engineering department, Fiona Kinnear. You're online, Fiona? Morning, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I am. Welcome. Thank you. So we'll call for apologies, please. And we have an apology by Council Petrie. Yeah. Um, thank you, Councillor Paul. Second, please. Councillor Murray, I thank you all in favour, Councillors. Ken Carey. And obviously, um, Councillor Paul, thanks for sharing the information. I thought you'd raise all obviously with you. Hope it goes well. Is there any disclosure of declarations of interest, Councillors? No. Move on to our business of the morning. It is item GOV 2 slash 21. Take your chief executive recruitment and selection process. Can I have a move and a second review of this item, please? Councillor Bob Rogan, thank you. Second by Councillor Sawyer, and I thank you. And Councillors, I will hand over to our, uh, our uh, head of um, HR Workforce Development and Safety, a very well rest, Mr. West Lockwood, and um, to, just to present this report, Councillors. Can I say that? Very well rest, yes, we should get the other Over you, Wes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Beck. Um, thank you, uh, Councillors. Uh, look, the report's fairly straightforward. It's a, it's a fundamental process that uh, I guess you're all well versed and experienced in. Um, there's probably just a couple of items um, outside of that report that I'd just like to add to, just to stand on the most basic general reminder of that process um, and the conditions behind that, including the actions and guidelines. Um, so, what we will be doing, obviously, is, is seeking quotation and going through our procurement policy. Um, to seek for consultants for the procurement of the general manager slash chief executive. Um, as far as the act is concerned, it's fairly straightforward. As a council, you have the obligation to appoint the GM. Um, there's some minimum requirements in terms of the advertising behind that, which will be looked after by the recruitment agency. Um, but just one thing I'd like to bring to your attention is within the act, there is one specific guideline that's referenced to. Um, that really is your predominant guideline on, on this process. Um, so council must take uh, any relevant guideline into consideration before exercising its functions. Uh, and that guideline that is applicable to this process is the Premier Cabinet Division Local Government Guidelines for Appointment and Oversight of General Managers 2011. Well, I have a copy of that with you here. Um, we're quite happy to distribute this document and or provide links to where that document is. Um, a very simple and easy to read document and just goes through the basic process that you as a council is required to adhere to um, and implement through this process. Uh, in terms of the actual process of um, the procurement, um, obviously council has a procurement policy. Where this particular item fits in is probably at this stage within our 5 to 50 K guidelines. Um, but myself and the acting C have discussed there might be that issue where it does go between the 50 and 150 pages around or just over that 50 pay guideline. So as a minimum, we'll be, be seeking three quotes. Um, but what we've probably decided to do because we are on the verge of that 50 to 150 is go out formally with a small scope and seek basically tenders for that, um, for that process. Um, that tender process or quotation process um, I've outlined broadly here in terms of a, a time frame. Um, by close of business this Monday the 1st, we will have advertised the, this uh, recruitment process through 
um, and supporting members. We are going to allow two weeks for a return of quotations, which will take us out to Monday the 15th of February. Allowing one week between the 15th and the 22nd, and it is a fairly tight time frame, uh, to allow that engagement and negotiation of the successful, um, or at least the negotiation between the successful initial parties if you want to then review. Um, with the intent, hopefully, to go to the Torrington Council meeting. Um, I'm just clarifying, um, I think that's 24. Yep. To try and have basically the next report put forward to Council uh, for your selection of um, the uh, consultant for the recruitment process. Well, just quickly on that, so come back to the February yeah. meeting on the 24th, don't you say? That's correct, yes. Yeah. So that'll be a later then. Can we? Oh, well, the business. Which few the business paper will be done. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm just sorry. I'm yeah. talking. Sorry, oh. just, a, just a comment. The intention <coughs> is to try and get it up as a late report. We have over the report that was put together um, sort of recommendation to hold the extraordinary council meeting for some reason. I can't leave that particular deadline, but that gives us the opportunity to have a an issue. So what we're seeking from council today is to resolve that they're happy to hold an extraordinary meeting if they're unable to get to yep. as soon as they can. Uh, yeah, thank you. I'm glad you mentioned that, Colin, because again, this is fairly you know, time constraint uh, in what we're trying to achieve here, as that's notified by the council is wanting to get this done yeah. as soon as reasonably practical, and then that's what we're going to do. And to you, Wes, and, and uh, Colin, all the stuff involved with this before I get a question to do with the report. Um, it's really councillors, and I know I speak for them, we're really appreciative of the effort that goes into this, and with that time frame, we're trying to make it happen. And, and we know that that's a, a lot of work in that, and fully respectful and appreciative of the effort that goes into Any questions for West for our senior acting CE to do with the report? Uh, Councillor Sawyer, then we're going to hear Councillor Bromwich. Through you, Mr. Mayor, it's not a question of where, it's more of a reinforcement uh, of dot point three on the top of page six, in an open and transparent manner while ensuring appropriate confidentiality is maintained. Yes. During the last recruitment process, at least two councillors decided to get themselves involved in that area and opened us up to possible lawsuits that of unsuccessful candidates. So I'm just reminding everybody, because of my HR background, it is a very fine line to get involved with these sort of arrangements if you're not delegated the authority to do so. So I'm just reminding us, we have a job in the role to interview the people that are chosen at the end for the shortlist. We don't get involved before that stage and we don't get involved in the reference checking either. Thank you, Councillor Sawyer, and will be supportive of that comment. Our involvement is here in the room and dealing with these reports. Well, Councillor Berry, I'll go to Councillor Brom and then I'll come to you. Councillor Brom. Uh, just a quick question with finances. I was just wondering if um, Mr. Dellison was saying that we were getting the money from the budget. Good question, Councillor. Uh, thank you, and that's really you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the next quarterly budget review will be presented at the February meeting, yeah, and uh, at that meeting, we do uh, try to come on this if you have the As you know, uh, the Victoria it's called the budget to uh, expend any further money uh, and, uh, Obviously, this has to be done, and so we will have to see what we can do, but um, yeah, it's a difficult situation. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Thank you, Paul. Councillor Vera, we're going to give a question to do the report. Councillor Vera? You're on here, Councillor Berry. I've missed the last of the conversation because I keep on losing reception. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions I, I'd like to know, when can we tell someone what type of general manager we want? We don't do it now. We do it presumably after we talk, uh, talk, re decide which recruitment agency we're going to get. Councillor, i just a... Uh, yeah. Random question for me. Are you meaning that that's in our advertisement or 
When we talk to my, I dare say, because we couldn't advertise it, we want a person that's going to uh, uh, say, look after tourism, forget about everything else or whatever. Yeah. Wessel Con. I think what Councillor Berry's. Sorry, I think what Councillor Berry is referring to is as soon as Council has chosen the uh, consultant that they wish to work with, our first first job of, of that person will be to make contact with the council and to actually sit down and discuss your your requirements, what you're looking for, timeframes, process. Wes and I are trying to get us to the, the point where we've covered off on the council process to get to a person um, to actually run that process from there on in. Did you want to comment? No, no, no. Okay. Does that answer your question, Councillor Berry? Yes. Okay, thank you. Councillors, any more questions to do with the report? Councillor Yeah, I answered it quite well. Thank you, Councillor. Where do you advertise? Just in this normal local government uh, section with main major newspapers or all on the computer or yep, on the procurement side of things? Yeah, or the recruitment. No, yeah, probably recruitment. Yeah, that will have to stay in the government. <laughs> Just, I think what Councillor Bishop is saying when we get to the point of advertising for Chief Executive, at the moment we are advertising for the person to run that process yeah. for you. So when you choose um, a person who puts in a quotation, Council will work with them to decide where they want the position of the general manager advertised. So in the green book, um, on, um, you know, it may well be national, international, however council wishes to do that, that's what we've talked with the recruitment consultant and obviously the discuss those associated costs which will have an impact on the budget as well. The three years to is obviously a bit of a disconnect between the actual act is slightly getting outdated because the minimum requirement is for that position to be advertised for a minimum of two weeks through new newspapers statewide. So obviously we're going a lot broader than the newspaper stage one with electronic media now does. Yeah. Other questions to ask to ask about senior staff councillors? If there's another uh, questions, councillors, we've got this recommendation there. All in favour? Yes, can. Thank you. We just go straight into the next one. Okay. okay. Thank you, Marlene. Councillor Boyle will close this part of the meeting. And as always, he's headed in Beach and Army, and we're back here at half past 10. Thank you. The rationale is to keep the process a little bit.